When the power goes out, how long can my refrigerator run on a solar backup system? That's one of the questions you're going to ask if you're trying to put together a backup system. Um, for this video, we're going to try to answer that. And the answer may actually surprise you, and it may not have anything to do with the refrigerator. I've got two of these EG4 Life Power 4 batteries. They hold a little over five kilowatt hours of energy each. The two of them would hold a little over 10 kilowatt hours. This is a 3000 watt grow watt inverter that's going to take the DC energy from the battery, turn it into 120 volts AC to run this 20 year old Kenmore Elite refrigerator. For the first test, we're going to only use one battery. It's one rack mount battery. I'm going to turn the bottom one off. And we're also going to turn off the solar. So it's just running on the battery. Normally in the daytime, the solar uh, panels would be recharging the battery, but we're not going to do that for this test. You'll see this icon go out um, in a second here. There it is. Okay, and over on the transfer switch, we've got just the refrigerator circuit running. I'm going to use a couple of uh, third-party software programs to monitor uh, what's going on. This is Solar Assistant, and I'm looking at my uh, battery. <clears throat> it says 99.6. Basically, this is fully charged. It's 12 noon, and we're going to start this test. Okay, and this software is Curb, and it's monitoring the individual circuits. Um, right now, the refrigerator's on, but it's not uh, running. The compressor's not running yet. We're just running the outlets. That's, that's just basically the modem and the Wi-Fi in my office that's running. And that's pretty much it. Okay, now we just jumped up to 150-some watts, uh, which means the compressor in the refrigerator just kicked on. So let's go in. And let's see, the refrigerator's pulling about 138, 140 watts when the compressor kicks on. And it runs for a little while, then it turns off. I think it's about 20 minutes to 30 minutes each time. Okay, these light blue areas right here are the car charger running earlier today, but we're not going to run it anymore during this 24 hours of this test. Okay, so remember, we started at noon. Uh, we're going to jump forward to midnight. Okay, these blue areas, you can see each time that the compressor kicks on and runs from 20 to 30 minutes, and then it's off for about a half an hour or so. Okay, and now the battery is down to 67%. So that, uh, that's what we've done in 12 hours. All right, let's jump to the end of the test. So 24 hours, we're going to 12 noon of the next day, and the battery's now sitting at about 34%. So we've used about two-thirds of our battery, and we have about a third left. Um, let's jump over to the Curb app just for a second. Okay, and we're looking at it over 24 hours, so you can see all the times the compressor kicked on and off. Right here is probably the defrost cycle kicking on in the middle of the night, and it kicks up a little higher uh, wattage just for a little while. This little surge right here is the coffee maker that's hooked to the same circuit as the refrigerator coming on at, uh, in the morning. All right, I'm going to switch this uh, from watts to kilowatt hours so we can see the amount of energy that we used. And I'm going to go to a week. Okay, so on Tuesday, uh, we used about 1.47 kilowatt hours and 1.17 kilowatt hours for all the circuits, for the office circuits and the refrigerator. Uh, so about 2.6 kilowatt hours for everything over the 24 hour period. Okay, I'm going to round off all these numbers to um, just get a point across. Uh, basically, this isn't going to be very precise because uh, the relationship between the state of charge of the battery um, is not a one-to-one -one relationship with the amount of kilowatt hours that are remaining. The uh, measurements that we took on the Curb app are not very precise and so forth. But I want to get this, this point across right here. We started out with the battery at 100%. And after we ran it for a while, we used about 50% of the power of the battery to run the refrigerator and the office circuits. But we've got another 20% missing here. That's the point I want to get across. That is the inverter. Because the inverters are going to pull down 40 to 50 watts of power just being on. Even if you're not running any circuits at all, 
you're pulling down, losing about 20% of your uh, battery life in, in a 24 hour period. Now, when we run two batteries or more, that percentage goes down. So when I'm running two batteries, I, I'm only going to have a 10% loss. And if I were running four batteries, I'd only have about a 5% loss. Okay, we're going to run another test. It's about eight o'clock in the morning. Um, we're using both of the batteries and the solar panels are connected again. So we're charging the batteries back up while we're running the circuits during the daytime. This is the normal way that the system should be operating. So the uh, refrigerator is still running, but uh, there's a lot more power coming in through the solar panels than is going out right now. Uh, also remember, this is the beginning of December. So we are in the shortest days of the year. We won't get as much um, power as we will in the summertime. Okay, we started this test at 8 o'clock this morning with uh, the sun coming up. Now the sun is going down. It's about 6 o'clock. So we don't have any more solar coming in, but the battery's still at 98%. And we're going to jump to 7 o'clock in the morning the next day. Now the sun is just starting to come up. Uh, we aren't really getting but one watt of solar power right now. But notice because we used the solar all day yesterday um, and we're running two batteries, we're at 79%. This is much better. Um, and within the next hour, the sun is going to hit enough to run a couple hundred watts, which will take care of the refrigerator load. Okay, and back over in the Curb app, looking at uh, a 24-hour period, we can see all the blue areas where the refrigerator was running. Okay, one last time in the time machine, we're going to jump forward to 945. The sun is out full again, and our batteries are completely recharged. So we've started the cycle all over again. So even on a cloudy day, you're typically going to be able to draw more power than you need to just run a refrigerator and still recharge your batteries. Larger loads, of course, require a lot more power, things like car chargers and ovens and air conditioners and so forth. Okay, so there's three main pieces of information you have to know. How many kilowatt hours do your batteries provide? How many kilowatt hours will your refrigerator use in a 24-hour period of time? And you can use something like a kilowatt meter um, to find that out. Uh, also, how much power is your inverter using? So even a, an inverter that's only drawing 50 watts of power, well, over 24 hours, that's over a kilowatt that you have to account for. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.